The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Second chapter, text number 12. By His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded on March 19, 1966 at the Mishra Yoga Society, New York. What is the translation? In fact, there was never a time when I was not, or when you or these kings were not. Nor is it the fact that hereafter we shall cease to be. Yes. Krishna is trying to convince Arjuna that uh, death does not take place. He says clearly that myself, I am the Supreme God, Krishna, yourself, you, and all the other kings and the soldiers, those who have assembled in this great battlefield, it is not that in the past we are not existing. And in the present, we are now face to face, we are seeing that we are existing. And in the future, we shall also exist in the same way. In the same way means individually. Just like I am an individual person, you are an individual person, he is an individual person, uh, so I, you, he, or they, uh, first person, second person, and the third person. So that individuality continues. Individuality of every living being is a fact. Therefore, in the actual field also, we see that uh, we have got difference of opinion. What I think, he may not agree with me, because we have got his individual. Yeah. Similarly, your thinking may not be agreed by another gentleman. So everyone has got his individuality. That is a fact. Not that the just like there is a class of philosophers who says that the soul is a uh, homogeneous one entity and after the destruction, after the annihilation of this body, the soul as a substance will mix up. Just like uh, water you keep in different parts. In different parts you keep water. So the water takes the shape of the pot, the bowl, the round bowl. You keep water, the water takes the shape of round. So similarly, there are thousands of or millions of water pots, and suppose all the waters are mixed up, then and there is no distinction, just like they were in the pots. So their theory is that when a soul is uh, liberated, then the that it mixes up with the super-soul. Just like a drop of water taken from the sea water and again put it into the sea, it mixes up. It loses its identity. So that is one theory. But here Lord Krishna says that uh, myself, yourself, 
and all others who have come here. There were uh, about sixty millions of people assembled in that fight. It was not a, a small fight. In India, there was, of course, that was also great world world war. Just like we had experienced, I think in the first world war, none of you had seen, because you are all young men, and we were child when the first world war was declared. We are all boys, school children. My age was at that time. Fourteen years old in 1914, when there was fight declared between German and uh, Belgian. So that was the first World War. Then Second World War was in 1939. That was also German and English fight like that. But actually, this was also World War. This battlefield of Kurukshetra, because. Uh, all the kings of the world, they joined either this party or that party. So there was a great assembly of all worldly kings. Now, Krishna says that either myself, either yourself, or these persons who are assembled here, uh, they are individual, they were individuals in the past, they are now individual, and they will continue to be individual even after annihilation of this body. Now, we are, suppose we are all laymen, we are ignorant what is actually position, what is the actual position. But, we have got our discretion also. Every one of you has some uh, knowledge in the history. Now in the history, in the class, suppose you are now thirty years old or thirty-five years old, and suppose two hundred years before the history which you read, you find that all people were individuals. And at the present, you are experiencing that all individuals, they are all living entities, either human beings or animals or birds or anywhere you can see that they are individuals. Then why should you not believe that in future they will remain individuals? Do you follow? In the past they were individuals. In the present they are individuals. And why not in future they will remain individual? It is naturally concluded that uh, um, they will continue to be individual. Even we do not uh, have any sufficient knowledge in either of these two theories mixing up or keeping individual. But by our own small reasoning we can understand that in the future history we have information that there were individual persons. At the present moment also we are seeing that there are individual persons. So why not in the future? How it is that in the future they will mix up, become one homogeneous thing? It is quite reasonable. And this conclusion is like this. Just like in two hundred years before, in the month of March, the climatic position was like this. And in 1966, we find in March, the climatic position is exactly the same. And in future, naturally I conclude that in future, in March, the same climatic condition will be there. In astronomy also, if you find that in March, in second first day, the sun rising is like this. And uh, actually, 
And in the present March, month of March 1966, we see the same exact time. And the whole calculation of astronomy is made like that. They prepare hundred years astronomical chart. Hundred years. How they do prepare? By this calculation. And then the past way it was like this. Uh, at the present, it is like this. So naturally, in future, it will be like this. Just like you are speaking of the uh, imminent spring time, the, the nature, how will be decorated, how spring time, it will be nice. Because you have past experience, so you are foretelling. It is not foretelling. From past experience, we are telling that uh, this will take place. This will take place. So this is another point, to understand things by our reasoning. But uh, there are things which is beyond our reasoning. There are things just like God, uh, the, the existence of God. Of course, by our reasoning, we take it for granted that because everything has a creator, just like we have this mm, tape recorder before us, so we know that there is a manufacturer. So the typewriter, there is a manufacturer, and everything. There is a mm, father or manufacturer. Myself, I am I am created by my father. My father was created by his father. Similarly, naturally, we can conclude that this whole cosmic situation, the whole material manifestation, there is one creature. So these are simple reasoning. Uh, it is not very hard to understand. But at the same time, there are things which are beyond our experience, beyond our reasoning, beyond our, um, I am saying, conception. Those things are called uh, achintya. Achintya means inconceivable. Inconceivable. Now, how to understand the which is beyond our conception? Today, a scripture says like this. Achintya khaluri bhava natastakina jujayat. Anything which is beyond our conception, beyond our reasoning power, beyond our uh, approach of the material senses, uh, such things we should not try to have conception simply by arguments. Uh, so, in the Vedic injunction it is said, that tapko apatishyam, what should be our real understanding, that we cannot establish simply by argument. Tapko apatishyam, sutayo vivinya, if we uh, consult different scriptures, then we will find that one scripture is speaking something, another scripture is speaking something else. Hmm. Just like uh, cow killing, take, take it for example. The Hindus, uh, they say that uh, cow killing is uh, irreligious. But the Mahamadans say, no, cow killing is religious. There is some adjustment. But, now in the scripture I see that the cow killing, in some scriptures it is said, the cow killing is irreligious. And another scripture says, the cow killing is religious. So, which of them I shall accept? This is, this is all right or that is all right? So, uh, therefore, uh, it is said that Sutayo um, Vibhinna, if you consult the defined scripture, you will find different contradictory statements. Ah. Your scripture may be different from my scripture. 
and nasam munijyasya jasa matangna vindam. If you consult philosopher, you will find one philosopher is differing from another philosopher. Uh, a big philosopher means who has uh, cut down other philosophers and put up his own theory. This is true. <laughs> this is going on. Tako pratishya sutayo bhinya nasu munit jasa matangna bhinyam. Then, how to conclude what is the right path? I cannot establish it by my imperfect argument. I cannot consult in the scripture. Neither I can take real uh, instruction from different philosophers. Then what what is the way of having the real thing? So I say the dharmasya tattvang nihitam guhāyāṁ The truth of uh, religiosity is very confidential, very secret. So, how to know it? Mahājana jena gata sapantha. We have simply to see that great personalities, as they have taken up, we have to follow that. Just like uh, in your Christian religion, you may not understand all the biblical injections or you may not have the time, but you simply, if you follow the ideal life of Lord Jesus Christ, then you get the same result. Similarly, the Mahamedans, if they follow the ideal life of Muhammad, Hazrat Muhammad. Uh, so they get the result. Mahajana Jena Gatasna Pantha. Just like in an unknown path in a village, especially when there is a field. Now in, in the city you can know that I have come so far because the streets are numbered and you have got the location and there are some symptoms, this house or that house. But uh, in the country, uh, everything, every uh, every place is of the same similar nature, the same jungle, the same field, uh, uh, the same grass. So we do not know uh, where I am going, or in the sea, or in the sea. I have got experience. Uh, have you ever traveled in the sea? No. But uh, while I was coming from <laughs> India, uh, so everywhere I see a round only, round of water. Uh, I do not know which way this sheep is proceeding. You see? But they have got a chart. They have got a chart. By latitude, longitude, by time, and by chart, they are calculating. Now, I was ask, asking the captain, where we have come? He was saying in the Mediterranean Sea, oh, you are. Uh, so many miles from Italy, we are so many miles from uh, uh, like this, Tunisia. Now we are coming to Gibraltar, like this. But I was seeing all parts of water only. Uh, I was seeing just after ten miles I shall reach, but it never reaches. So, uh, uh, that how, what are these charts? The charts are that experienced uh, sailors, they have made the charts. The captain was also consulting that chart because it was made by experienced sailors. That is nothing. So similarly, in calculating in which way we have to uh, find out our salvation is to follow uh, such liberated souls. So last day we had been discussing the difference between the Conditioned soul and liberated soul is that a conditioned soul is imperfect in four ways. A conditioned soul is sure to commit mistakes. A conditioned soul is in illusion. A conditioned soul 
has the tendency for cheating others. And conditioned soul has got his senses imperfect. Imperfect senses. Therefore, knowledge should be taken from a liberated soul. Why this Bhagavad Gita is so honest? Now, this Bhagavad Gita was spoken in India and it is understood that it is a scripture of the Hindus. But why now you are Americans, you are also keeping this Bhagavad Gita? And uh, not only in America, in other countries also, in Germany. In Germany there are great, great scholars uh, in England, in Japan, uh, in all countries. So why? Because it is spoken by a great personality. We Hindus, we accepting the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But others, even not accepting Him, a, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they accept it at, at least that he was a great personality. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, besides the Hindu community, others, they are also consulting the knowledge. Now, my point is that when such a great personality and when uh, we accept him as a Supreme Personality of Godhead, then his person is right. What he says, that from our practical experience we can conclude that every individual person were, were in the past individual, they are also individuals at the present and they will continue to be individuals. And this is by a common sense, but it is confirmed by Sri Krishna, whom we call the Supreme Personality of Godhead and uh, he is accepted as a great personality. He says, Natu eva ahana jatu natam. Don't think that I was not in existence. That means I was in existence. Not that just now I have come before you as God as Sri Krishna. I was Sri Krishna in the past also. And I am Sri Krishna at the present. Uh, uh, so also your sex, and so also others, all individuals. So, and at the present we are nachaivana bhavishama. I don't think that we shall not remain. Survey. This survey means we all. Not that. Survey is plural number. Janadhipa is plural number. So, uh, they are all individual souls. So the individual soul continues. That is the version. That is the version of the Bhagavad Gita, and uh, we, it is better to accept this version without unnecessarily commenting it or um, interpreting it in a different way, so that one. Uh, the interpretation is very bad. You see, a scripture hmm, should not be interpreted. A scripture should be taken as it is, as it is. And besides that, interpretation, when interpretation is required, when a thing is not properly understood, at that time interpretation is required. Otherwise there is no necessity of interpretation. So similarly, a thing which is very clear to everyone, so there is no necessity of interpretation. Here, the, uh, the statement of Bhagavad Gita as by, spoken by uh, Lord Krishna is very clear that myself, yourself, and all these people who are assembled here, uh, they are all individual persons. And they were individual persons in the past. And at the present moment, we see that they are individual persons and they will continue. They will continue. No. I may not know what they will become in the future, but because he is God, because he is the Supreme Personality, his statement should be accepted.
That makes my knowledge perfect. Uh, uh, just like uh, I give you one very simple example. Now, if a little boy asks his mother, says, who is my father? The mother says that here is your father. Then if the child says, I don't believe it, that he is my father. Is it possible to convince him in any other way than the statement of the mother? Is it possible? No. That is the final. Ah, that is the final. And if he says, I don't believe it, that is his foolishness. Uh, similarly, a thing which is beyond our conception, beyond our limit of knowledge, that should be taken from the authority. So here is an authority, Sri Krishna. Authority. He is authority, uh, authority is accepted by all over the world. Uh, in, uh, in our India, there are five different and this early sensation of authority. Uh, uh, just like the Sankarais, uh, followers of Sankarasat and uh, uh, Vaishnavai, generally they are two. Uh, Mahavadi, impersonalist, and personalist. The personalist, the school, philosophers, they are divided into four. Uh, Ramanu Sampradaya, that means followers of Acharya Ramanu, Madhyacharya Sampradaya, or the followers of Madhyacharya, uh, uh, Nimbata Sampradaya, followers of Nimbata Acharya, and Vishnu Swami Sampradaya. They, their conclusion is, they, is the same. Although they are four in number, their conclusion is the same. And another set, is Sankarai Sampradaya. So all these four, I mean the five different sections of the Hindus, they accept Sri Krishna as the Supreme Personality of God. All of them. There is no denial. Uh, although they are five, they are not defined thesis and philosophy, little, little defined, not uh, I mean, in conclusion, but it's still, now, uh, Sipad Sankaracharya, he uh, he is supposed, uh, he, he is considered to be impersonalist. Impersonalist means he does not believe in the personal form of God. But he still, he has commented in this, uh, uh, of this Bhagavad Gita, uh, Shankar Bhasa, uh, he has admitted there that Sri Krishna is the personality of God. He has also admitted. Others, they are Vaishnavites. Other acharyas, other authorities, they are Vaishnavites. They have naturally admitted because they believe from the beginning. But even Sankaracharya, who is impersonalist, he has also clearly written that Sabhavan Sam Krishna. Krishna is the supreme personality of God. And there are many evidences in many scriptures and baby scriptures that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. In the Brahma Sangita it is stated, Ishara Parama Krishna Satidananda Vigraha Anadiradi Govinda Sarva Karna Paranam. Ishara Parama. Ishara. Ishara means the Lord. No, there are different Lords. Different Lord degree. Lord means controller or proprietor. So he has got some lordship over your uh, environment. He has got some lordship. I have got some lordship. He has got some lordship. Oh, the President Johnson, he has got his some lordship. In this way, you will find different degrees of uh, lordship. But here it is said that this is supreme Superlative degree Lord is Krishna. Above Him there is no other Lord. 
we are will find that you are bigger lord than me he is bigger than lord you and somebody is bigger than him in this way you can approach uh, the lord chief of johnson then you can uh, uh, see another man he is uh, more than johnson another person more than johnson like that but when you reach sri krishna by such analytical process you will find that nobody is greater nobody is equal than sri krishna therefore sri krishna is the supreme personality of god head and he says something uh, we must agree to accept <laughs> we must uh, if we don't agree uh, that will not be beneficial for us when a great man says something and he is the supreme personality of god head he says that we are all individual but we are all individual but god is also individual but it is confirmed in the vedic literature ah uh, ah uh, nitya nityanam chetana chetananam nitya nityanam uh, nitya means eternal we are all eternal and uh, this is plural number so amongst all the eternal living entities he is the chief this is a definition of that is given in this place nitya chetananam nit chetana chetananam we are all concept concept so uh man he is the supreme concept he is the supreme concept now man of course there are some yogi uh, school uh, in america is fine they do, do not believe in god but it is not actually the yoga principle uh, does not um, deny the existence of god god is there now uh, just to inform you i have uh, just uh, brought one uh, very authoritative book uh, by two great professors of uh, calcutta university uh, the book is called introduction to indian philosophy now he says he says means he is giving after studying all different kinds of philosophy he is giving a nutshell idea of his type of philo- and, and system now just uh, see the place of god in the yoga the place of god in the yoga as distinguished from the samkhya the yoga is theistic yoga system was introduced by uh, lord patanjali a great author is now they have studied and uh, here is two person and this book is very authoritative this is the sixth edition let's see it has a uh, very good sale in all the universities of the world it is a very authoritative book and this talk of chatterjee and dr dutta they are uh, not ordinary words uh, this is accepted by all universities and they are authoritative person now just i am therefore reading his words what does he say the yoga system now right. as the student is from the sankha the yoga is theistic yoga system is theistic theistic means believing in god it admits the existence of god and both practical and theoretical god ah uh, patanjali himself have and has not felt the necessity of god for solving any theoretical problem of philosophy for him god has more a practical value than a theoretical one this is a bhasana patanjali devotion to god is considered to be the great practical value as much as uh, it forms a part of practice of yoga those who are practicing yoga they must be devotee of god otherwise yoga will be a failure you see right so in as much as it forms a part of practice of yoga and is one of the means for the final attainment of samadhi yoga or the restraint of the mind 
the yoga chitta nidoda the whole purpose of practicing yoga is to control the mind control the mind now here patanjali system that unless you and uh, i mean this uh, conduct devotional service and not that bhakti there is no success of yoga there is no success of yoga the subsequent commentators and interpreters the difficulty is that uh, wrong interpretation of the original text uh, believe this man audience so then the subsequent commentators and interpreters of the yoga evince also a theoretical interest in god and discuss more fully the speculative problems as to the nature of god and the proof for the existence of god they uh, practically check up the speculative way uh, uh, but uh, patanjali as uh, he is he takes um, uh, practically the without devotion of god there is no such thing yoga that the yoga system has come to have both a theoretical and practical interest in the divine being according to the yoga god is the supreme person now just see this is authority statement huh? a supreme person did you ever hear uh, you have been in so many yoga societies did you ever hear that god is a supreme person huh? according to the yoga god is the supreme person who is above all individual selves and is free from all defects now the same thing in the bhagavad gita also the lord krishna he he is telling he is informing us about the future or of the past because he is perfect he can see both past and future and because we are not perfect because we do not know now and uh, accepting it that you existed in in your in the future uh, say your age is 34 35 years can you say 36 years before where you were <laughs> you cannot say uh, or suppose you live for 100 years can you say 100 years after where you shall be you cannot say because you are imperfect Huh? Because we are imperfect, so God is not imperfect. God is perfect being. Yes, yeah, yoga system also accept like that. According to the yoga, God is the supreme person who is above all individual. Individual. Now here we see the individual. So every every living entity is individual. That this this particular one, that individual self, and is free from all defects. and because he is free from all defects his statement is defectless and that we must admit my statement because i am imperfect my statement is also imperfect i have no idea of the past and future how can i say that in future you will be like this or in the past you are like this i cannot say that who is defect left who can see past future and present equally and there is no defect he can say so here is the statement of uh, the supreme past so we have to believe it uh, we cannot go out of it if we don't believe it then we are losers if we don't believe it then we are losers he is the perfect being who is eternal and all pervading that see all pervading that means although you can see him uh, as a person just like man uh, you are present before me as a person but you are absent in your residence is it not fact and uh, god is not like that god is although he is present krishna although he is present just before or during inspecting him but he is all pervading at the same time uh, a crude example at 12 o'clock in the 
midday, you see that the sun is uh, above your head. And 5,000 miles away, if you ask any friend, where is the sun? He will say, it is on my head. Uh, 5,000 uh, uh, miles this way, that way, you inquire. And everyone will say, the sun is on my head. So if a material thing, sun is a material thing, if a material entity can be so all-pervading at one and the same time, so is it not that the supreme spiritual being, he will not be all-pervading? He is. Certainly. He must be. He must be. So here, you see uh, that he is the perfect being who is eternal and eternal. Eternal means uh, the eternal in everything, eternal in consciousness. Now Krishna says that uh, you and myself and all these beings are like this because he has got eternal consciousness. He has actually experienced what I was. But because my consciousness is not eternal, I have forgotten what I was in my previous birth, neither I can say what I shall be in my next birth. Uh, these are the distinctions. Uh, if we falsely claim that I am God uh, and that Supreme Consciousness, it is our lunacy. It is our lunacy. We should not indulge in that way. Uh, and anyone teaching in that way, uh, that is a cheating. It is not possible. Here is an authority book. He is a, a perfect being who is eternal and all perfecting, omnipotent. Omniscient. Uh, all individual selves are more or less subject to the affliction uh, of ignorance. Who we are, all living entities, except God, everyone, uh, everyone, they are subjected to ignorance, forgetfulness. Uh, that's the fact. Ignorance, egoism. Even means that without having the qualification, one declares that I am God. This is required. Without having the qualification of God, if one declares that I am God, a foolish man, uh, that is called egoism. Uh, egoism, desire, aversion, and dread of death. They have to do various kinds of work, good, bad, and in, in, indifference and reap the consequences thereof. That means they are subjected to, to the acts of your... Uh, um, I mean, the reaction of their acts. If you do some good thing, then you reap the good result. If you do some bad thing, then you reap the good, bad result. Uh, uh, and because we are uh, defective, therefore we have to do something good, some, sometimes bad. The best thing is, therefore, the God is all good. If we follow God, then we become good. If we follow God on a God's representation, then we also become good, because God is always good. A good cannot give you bad direction. Therefore, devotional service it is an incumbent that everyone should be as and followers. Uh, everyone should be followers of the instruction of God. Uh, uh, that is devotional service. Nobody should be uh, deviated from the service of the Lord. The whole Bhagavad Gita, this is the beginning, and at the end the Lord will instruct, when, uh, I mean to say, Arjuna. That's him. Sarva dhammaan kalitajya mami tangu saranam vajya. You just uh, surrender unto me and aham tangu sarva pavidva bhokho yasnami maa sucha. And I shall protect you, give you protection from all reactions of sinful life. The best thing, if you want to be all good, then we have to follow the instruction of all good. Uh, we have to mold our life in such a way 
that um, oh, what is um, uh, advised by the all-good, that will make our life perfect. 